Hi, this is Extruded Squared, and I figured I'd make a quick rigging tutorial using the Blender add-on uh, Rigify uh, to enable it. Go to Edit Preferences, and then type in Rigify, uh, and just click the little check mark. It's a default add-on for Blender, so you don't have to download anything. Uh, after that, do Shift A, uh, add a human meta rig, and so that will add a uh, default rig that you can kind of base your rig off of. So, uh, usually I come over to object in front so I can see it all the time even when it's stuck in the mesh. Uh, and You just want to kind of line it up with your uh, character as best you can. Uh, and then it's just go into edit mode and shift things around. Uh, oops, uh, Enable symmetry. Uh, shift things around just so that way they fit a little bit better. And I'll widen her hips a little bit, come to the side view, make sure her knees lined up, uh, get that behind the heel. Um, I'm going to just delete the face because I it's a little bit extra work. Uh, and then there's a hidden little face bone in here that you also have to delete if you're getting rid of the face. Um, and Let's see, uh, to do the hands, I'm going to have to enlarge them a little bit. Uh, you can use uh, snapping and then set it to volume. Uh, and that could help with getting all the pieces where they need to go. Uh, you want to kind of line it up where you would think the joints would be. Uh, I'm going to just kind of fast forward through this because it's a little bit tedious. Ugh. And uh, when you're using the snapping, sometimes the roll of the bones can get messed up. So if you go over to the uh, armature data, um, where to go? Uh, axes, you can enable the axes, and you just want to rotate the bones so that way Z is facing down. It's going to curl towards the Z axis like this. So uh, just kind of go through control R and rotate that to get them to look right. Actually these are all kinds of messed up right now but I'll fast forward through this as well and fix it all up. Good enough for now. Um, and so once you have all that you're basically ready to come over um, and generate the rig. Before you generate the rig, you're going to want to do Control A, apply the scale, and if you moved the um, armature at all or the uh, meta rig at all, you're going to want to apply the location. Um, and then once that's done, you can generate that rig. You could hide the meta rig, uh, click on the rig that it generated. Uh, I like putting it up in front. And this is basically the rig that's generated for the character. Um, and so, I mean, you can just select everything in your character, uh, shift select the rig, control P with automatic weights. And that's basically she's rigged. It's There's going to be some funkiness with it, but, you know, you can... Jiggler, oh no, uh, turn off snapping. Uh, you could wiggle the arms. It already has uh, inverse kinematics enabled. Uh, you can come up here. You could disable the stretch. Um, so by default, it will just stretch towards the uh, IK targets. If you disable the stretch, it will stop. You could also enable forward kinematics if you wanted to control it with these little green uh, markers instead. Uh, that's useful for a lot of stuff. Um, there's still, uh, you'd have to go watch some weight painting tutorials to fix some of the other issues here. Uh, I don't have her face enabled, so the eyes are a little messed up. Um, the hair isn't really rigged right because I didn't have that many bones. But as a very basic uh, intro to Rigify, that's all you need. And you might ask, well, what if she is, you know, got a badonk or something? Uh, I'll figure it out in a second.
So for larger characters, you'll have to add some extra bones to help handle all the um, extra mass. Um, so in this case, uh, for this model I made for Soda Poppin for the character Liv, uh, I added an extra two belly bones, one for like the top and one for the bottom, uh, some butt jiggle bones, and that was about it for this one. Um, and I will go ahead and just remake this rig, um, minus some things. I'm too lazy to redo the hands, but I will go ahead and do that. All right, I'm just going to speed run making this rig. I'm going to use the basic human meta rig, which um, let me go ahead and put it in front. It's more or less the same as the normal human meta rig. It's just that it doesn't have a face and it doesn't have finger bones. So I'm just going to use it as a quick little example. Um, get it scaled up right, uh, enable uh, symmetry, and then just kind of get things roughly where they need to be. Um, check it from a bunch of different angles to make sure everything's looking right. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, Alright, so that's good enough for now. Um, and so for a normal rig, you would just uh, do Control or Shift A to add a bone in edit mode. And then you'd put it wherever. Um, let's put it where the belly would be. Uh, keep the offset so that way it's connected to the rest of the body. Uh, actually, I'll put it up here. Um, and so the only issue with this is for Rigify, when you generate the rig, um, that bone won't show up unless you do some things. So, actually one thing I need to do is apply the scale, apply the location, but um, in order for this bone to show up, you have to go over to uh, pose mode. Go to the bone, rig type, and then you have to choose a rigify rig type. Um, generally, the ones that I use is just basic super copy, which is just a basic bone, nothing special to it. Um, and this will control uh, what it appears as. So if I go ahead and generate the rig, um, this circle bone here, uh, why can't I? This circle bone here would be controlling the belly. Um, the other way to do this is to go to samples uh, or armature data uh, and then samples and then add a sample and that will basically just be uh, adding a basic super copy basically adds this bones right here. So let me go ahead and add um, a butt bone, uh, rotate it, get it roughly where it needs to be. Uh, let me hide this background for a sec. And yeah, good enough. Control P, keep offset. And so if you click F2, you can name the bone. Um, you're going to want to name it, you know, whatever, but, and then the important part is dot L. So that's her left butt. So now you can right click on it and do symmetrize. And now you have a symmetrical bone. Uh, and that will automatically be named butt dot R. And yeah, naming your bones is actually pretty important. So I highly recommend doing that. Um, and then you could regenerate the rig, and we have these little butt bones. Uh, so I'll go ahead and hide the meta rig, and just go ahead and try to bind the uh, uh, mesh to the rig with Control P with automatic weights. And that should be. Uh, she can wiggle and jiggle around. Uh, of course, seeing as that I didn't do anything with the hair or anything like that, it's going to act a little weird. You'd either have to do some weight painting to make sure that 
the arm isn't affecting this or add some um, bones up here to control the hair. <coughs> but uh, I would recommend watching a weight painting tutorial on that. Uh, and then the important part, uh, if you want to make it jiggle, uh, I'll add a link to a um, tutorial by Royal Skies that uh, explains how to do breast jiggle physics. Um, it works just as well for this. Um, so the two add-ons that I primarily use are spring bones and wiggle bones. Uh, I would say spring bones is a little bit better at making the jiggle physics, but it also sometimes crashes when I try and render things. So uh, you can get around that by uh, baking the bones, uh, baking the jiggle physics, but uh, just save before you do any rendering is all I would say. Um, so. All you do is so selecting this um, belly bone, I enabled spring and rotation, and then you can add uh, go into interactive mode, and it jiggles. You could play around with these settings, how bouncy it is, how fast, um, to get the proper amount of jiggle. Uh, and then for the wiggle bones, it's basically the same thing. Uh, I'll select the butt and the boobs. Wiggle bone set active, and while the animation is playing, uh, they will jiggle. And that's basically all there is to adding some really quick jiggle physics. I'll make another video explaining how to do the uh, physics that I had in that belly wall. But that's, I'm not going to say it's more complicated, it's just you have to fight cloth physics a lot more, which is painful. But hopefully this is helpful. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or if I did this very wrong and there's a much better way. I know there's new add-ons for Jiggle Physics that I haven't really played around with. Uh, yeah, just let me know. So the final way I like to do Jiggle Physics is a method created by uh, someone named Lujanir. I'll put a link to their tutorial in the description and I'm basically just going to be following that. Um, it's so we're going to be making a proxy mesh, which is going to be doing all the physics calculations, and it's going to move around our actual mesh. So I just did a cube. I hit Control 3 to subdivide it three times, uh, and then I'll go ahead and uh, move it to where it's vaguely in the shape of the belly. Uh, I went ahead and applied that subdivision, go to sculpt mode, uh, enable symmetry, and then just kind of uh, shift click to smooth the proxy mesh until it's more or less underneath the other mesh and then I go to the inflate uh, inflate brush and just kind of inflate it out a little bit until it's just barely over the main mesh or over the belly uh, just a little bit doesn't have to be super accurate, I just want it to be somewhat over and vaguely in the right shape. Alright, I'd say that's good enough. And so now uh, I'm going to click the number pad slash, um, go to the back here, uh, select a couple vertices, control plus a few times, and this is going to be the pinning group which is essentially the vertices we don't want to be moving at all. They're not going to be calculated for the jiggle physics because um, they're just connected to the actual body. So, uh, And then control G, add those to a new group. Um, and then we will go over to the physics tab, uh, cloth, and then this is just going to be putting in values uh, from that tutorial. So not a whole lot I could say about this. I there, It's hard for me to say if you wanted to modify these at all, um, what you should do exactly. Um, also, it's important to note that if your uh, model isn't roughly human size, if they're you know 20 meters tall, you might run into some issues. Um, this is based off of, I mean, this is supposed to be uh, the tutorial was for boobs, so everything is kind of based off of that. Um, and then the pinning group will be that group that we added. 0.14. And then for collisions, which uh, I'll just 
just copy their values. And in theory, it should be a big droopy belly. And so this is a, a bit too droopy. I'll fix that in a little bit. Um, I like to change the proxy mesh. I go over to the uh, object and then display as bounds just so I can see the actual mesh, but still click on this. <coughs> um, and then to bind the actual the belly to the proxy, it's we use a... Um, I have too many armatures in here. Um, there we go. Surface deform. Uh, the target will be our proxy mesh. Um, and then just bind. And now we have a extraordinarily droopy belly. So to fix that, I will go over to weight paint. And so this is the vertex group we made for the penning group. I'm just going to add a bit of uh, a bit more penning actually to make that symmetrical sometimes you have to tool symmetry and stable mirror vertex now it should be mirroring properly so that's a little bit better let me add some more down here Increase that weight a little bit. Oops. Let's get that. And so this is just going to make it a little bit less saggy. That's better. Um, let's check that. Oh, and so that's the sometimes physics can get cursed. All right, that's good enough for now. Um, you would also want to create a vertex group for the main mesh. And this will just tell it which things don't need to be uh, calculated with physics. I'm just gonna do a quick little selection. You'd do something a little bit more precise uh, if you're doing it. So assigns a new group, and then this vertex group will be group. Uh, and so right now it's doing the inverse of what we want, so we can click this little button, and now just the belly is drooping. It's a little weird looking. Uh, you'd want to play around with the weight paints a bit to make it a little bit smoother. Um, and then after that, um, the rest of the tutorial is basically just making it so the uh, proxy mesh will follow the armature and all that, but um, I, I think it would probably be better if you just watch or read through their tutorial. It would be a little bit better. Um, and then, uh, not cloth, uh, collision. Um, you could add a little ball to... So now you can play around with a big jiggly belly. It's not perfect. If you go through it too fast, bad things happen. Um, but it's pretty darn cool. I think that's about everything. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask in the comments. I probably am doing things wrong. Um, I highly recommend just reading through that Lugineer tutorial. I'll also put a link to a better Rigify tutorial and to the uh, Royal Skies Breast Physics tutorial, um, but that that's about it for me. This is I'm a little too wordy on these, but uh, hopefully that all works.